Chapter Nine. Jessie pulled up in front of Bree's building the next morning, excited and a little nervous. Today would be a defining day, though Bree had no idea. If she liked his church and saw herself continuing to come with him, he was prepared to start dating her. But if she couldn't, he would end it now before his feelings grew any more. He parked the truck, whispered a quick prayer, and headed inside. Can you ring Bree Carter and tell her Jessie Calhoun is here? He asked the man behind the front desk this morning. He still found it odd he couldn't just go up to her apartment, but he supposed with her money and family name she needed to be extra careful. The man nodded and picked up a phone. Miss Carter, there is a Jessie Calhoun here for you. Yes, ma'am. He placed the phone down and regarded Jessie again. You may go up. I assume you know the floor. Yes, thank you. Jessie flashed a smile and headed for the elevator. A moment later, he stood in front of Bree's door. He took a moment to scan his shirt and pants for any loose dog hair before ringing the bell. Bugsy didn't shed much, but occasionally he would find stray hairs on his clothing, and he wanted to make sure he had none today. The door swung open, and Bree smiled at him from the other side. Her blonde hair was curled and hung loose around her shoulders, and she wore a pale pink dress that brought out the sparkle in her eyes. You look beautiful, he said. A soft pink color flooded her face, and she looked away. Are you sure? I wasn't sure what to wear to church. It's been so long since I was in one. Well, God doesn't care what you wear to church, but yes, you look amazing. Though his church was laid back and many women wore pants and even jeans, Jessie always admired the women who dressed more femininely and wore skirts and dresses. Maybe it was old-fashioned, but he appreciated the differences between men and women. You might want to grab a coat, though. It was snowing on the way over here, and I'm not sure how much we're supposed to get. Right. Thank you. Bree ducked inside and moments later returned with an expensive-looking designer coat. Though Jessie would never be able to afford one like it, he had to admit it hugged her in all the right places. As they walked back to the elevator, he couldn't help wondering if her money and his lack of it would come between them. He made decent money on SWAT, but nowhere near what she was used to. If they did date, would she expect elaborate outings and expensive jewelry? And what if she invited him into her world? Would he fit in with her rich friends? He pushed the insecurities aside as he pushed the elevator button. They could wait. First, he had to see how church went. The falling snow made the drive a little slower, but half an hour later they arrived. Jesse attended a smaller Nazarene church on the outskirts of the city. He liked that it wasn't in the city traffic, and he didn't have to worry about parking. The building sat on about an acre, a large rectangular building with three crosses on top. But it had a playground for the kids, a small field, and a parking lot. More than any church in the city had. Jesse parked the truck and hurried to Bree's side to open the door. He wished he had brought an umbrella as the snow was coming down harder now. Want to make a run for it? Bree shook her head, a small smile pulling at the corners of her mouth. I love the snow. Let's just enjoy it. Jesse tilted his head at her. He had not expected that at all. Had he been wrong about Bree originally? Or was she changing in front of his eyes? All right, come on. He held out his hand, and she placed hers in his palm. Warmth traveled up his arm, and he shifted his hand so their fingers were intertwined. She winked at him, and hand in hand, they walked into the church. Greeters stood under the awning holding umbrellas, and one hurried their way as he noticed them, but Jesse waved him off. We're enjoying the snow, but thank you. 
Beside him, Bree giggled and tilted her face to the sky, letting the snow fall on her face. A moment later, they were in the church, brushing off the snow and laughing. Bree's nose was a bright pink beneath her sparkling eyes. Jessie took their coats and hung them in the small room off the main hallway, and then they found a seat in the sanctuary. He preferred to sit near the front, but he knew it made a lot of people uncomfortable, so he chose a seat near the middle. Jesse let Bree slide in first, and he sat on the end. He wanted to be a buffer for her from the people he knew would come and greet them. Jesse loved that he attended a friendly church, but he also remembered his first day and how uncomfortable he felt with everyone coming up to him and introducing themselves. Sure enough, as soon as they sat down, the people began arriving. With each one, Jesse shook hands first before introducing Bree. If anyone knew that she was Bree Carter, daughter of the billionaire, they kept it to themselves, for which Jesse was glad. He was sure the last thing she wanted was more attention drawn to her. When the people stopped coming and the music started, he felt Bree relax next to him. Bree was glad when the music started and the people stopped coming by. Her nerves were already on edge, and meeting a ton of new people just frazzled them more. When the songs ended, the pastor took the stage. Bree wasn't sure what she expected, but she hadn't pictured the thin man with a receding hairline. He wasn't dressed in a suit and tie, but a simple button-down shirt and slacks. When he opened his mouth, his voice was calm, and even though he spoke on a tough topic, he kept an even keel throughout. Bree was transfixed by the sermon, as the pastor spoke on loving the people of the world, but not being a part of it. We are in tough times right now. The world is telling us one thing, while the Bible tells us another. And unfortunately, some who have spoken out in hate have given Christians a bad name. Neither God nor Jesus told us to hate. In fact, the Bible says we are not to judge. That is God's place. We are to hold other believers accountable, if we know they are sinning, to help them see the error of their ways, so they can come back to Jesus. Even then, we are to do it with love. If they repent and come back, we are to forgive them, as Jesus forgives them. None of us are perfect, and we all need forgiveness. As for the world, and by this I mean those who do not profess to follow Jesus, we are to love the people, so they see the light of Jesus within us, and ask why we are different. Does this mean we enable and endorse things we know are against what God would want? Not at all. But remember that God does not weigh sin. God says we are to be in the world, but not of the world. So instead of focusing on others' sins, focus instead on being the light of Jesus. And instead of spouting hateful words, use your mouths to pray. This is not only what God commands us, but it will present an example for the world they cannot attack. Bree was not one for politics, but she was not ignorant to the vitriol in the world. She had never heard someone speak on simply showing love and praying, nor had she really understood what acting like Jesus meant. Was that why Jesse seemed so different to her? She posed that very question to him on the way back to her apartment. Are you so different because of Jesus? Jessie glanced over at her briefly before returning his attention to the road. What do you mean, different? Bree bit her lip as she thought. I don't know. You're unlike everyone I've known. You don't seem to care about the latest trends or getting into the hottest parties. Jessie smiled. Well, that's probably a lot of regular people who aren't billionaires. We don't get invited to those parties often. Okay, but there's also the thing with the kids at the hospital. I know a lot of people who have the money to do what you do, and they don't. I do try to live the way Jesus would want me to live. As the pastor said, I am not perfect, 
but I try to be an example for others. And when I mess up, I know that God is faithful and just and will forgive my sins if I confess them and repent. I also try to admit when I'm wrong. For example, I thought when I first met you that you were just a spoiled rich girl like a lot of other wealthy people I've known. I judged you before knowing you, and that was wrong. I'm sorry. Bree bit back a smile and shook her head. No, you were right. I was a spoiled rich girl. But this week I've started to see things differently. I even went to a party last night and left early. I didn't know why, but just felt like I didn't belong. I think you could do amazing things if you put your energy toward helping others. With your money and influence, you could really make a difference. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I'm going to ask my father if he'll help if I go back to school. I never knew what I wanted to do, but after losing my mom and seeing those kids, I think I want to look into nutrition. I've heard that some foods can help with diseases, and I really want to help those kids. Jesse flashed her another grin, one that lit his face up from ear to ear and displayed a tiny dimple in his cheek she hadn't noticed before. He was no Cade Sinclair, but he was handsome in his own way. I believe you would be a wonderful nutritionist, or dietitian. His words warmed Bree's heart in a way she hadn't felt in a long time. When they pulled up to her apartment, she waited for him to open her door before stepping out of the truck. There was just something about him opening her door that made her feel special. I'm really glad you came to church with me this morning, he said when they reached her door. I'm glad I came too. It was a nice place, and if you're open to it, I'd like to go again. I'd love it if you would come again. He grabbed her hands, sending a funny sensation up her arms, and folded them against his heart. I'm glad Brendan asked me to give you a chance. Me too. Her voice was quiet as she looked at him. Was he going to kiss her this time? His eyes held her gaze and then dropped to her lips. Ever so slowly, his face lowered to hers and his lips touched hers. They were soft and sweet, but sent a heat pulsing through her body. All too quickly, he pulled back and she opened her eyes. Would you like to go ice skating tomorrow? Bree blinked at him. She hadn't been expecting that question, but she would not pass up any time with Jesse. I'd love to. Wonderful. He tucked a strand of hair behind her ears, sending another jolt of electricity down her spine. As long as nothing catastrophic happens tomorrow, I should be off by 6 p.m. I should be off by 4, so that will work out perfectly. He held her gaze another moment before planting another quick kiss and then walking away. On cloud nine, Bree walked into her apartment. She couldn't remember the last time she had felt like this. She dropped her purse and hung up her coat before dialing her father's number. Now that she had told Jessie of her plan, she just needed to inform her father. Hey, Dad, when you get a chance, can I come see you or can you stop by my apartment? I have a proposition I want to discuss with you. How about we meet for dinner tonight? Her father suggested. I have a meeting to finish here, but I could meet you at five. It's a date. Bree smiled as she hung up. She just hoped her father would be as excited about this as she was. Dad... I want to go back to school, Bree said, as they sat down at a table in the far back of the restaurant. It was her dad's personal table, as far as she could figure, as it was the same one they ate at every time they came to this restaurant. His eyebrow arched, and he leaned back and folded his arms across his chest. I see. And what do you think you would like to study this time? Shopping? Jewelry making? Bree knew she deserved that. She had been too flighty in the past, but she needed to let him know this time really was different. No, Dad, 
I want to go to school to study nutrition. Why? You don't need to go on a diet, Bree. You look fine just the way you are. Bree took a deep breath. She had practiced what she was going to say at her apartment, but she hoped her father would listen. No, it's not about me. I met a guy this last week. He leaned forward, interrupting her. Oh, so this is about a guy. No, Dad, if you would just listen. I met this guy who is unlike anyone I've met before, and he took me to the children's hospital. He delivers toys to the kids there when he can. I almost couldn't go in because of what happened to Mom, but I'm glad I did. You should have seen these kids' faces when they saw Jesse. I'd like to do something like he does, some donation or something, but it got me thinking, too. I really want to study nutrition and see if I can use food to help cure diseases like cancer. Bree, I'm not sure food can cure cancer. Dad, I've done research. They are finding that certain foods and certain diets can help slow diseases and even reverse their effects. I want to help. I could work at the hospital or maybe a clinic and help people. Her father leaned back again and narrowed his eyes at her. Where is this coming from, Bree? I love you, but you haven't thought much about anyone but yourself for years. Bree sighed and dropped her eyes to the table. I know, Dad, but then I met Jesse, and you made me get a job. I saw how the other half lives, and I don't want to work at the coffee place for the rest of my life. This would allow me to get a better-paying job, one I love. And isn't that what you always said, that I should do something I love? Her father chuckled and ran a hand across his strong chin. Bree had the same chin, though hers, thankfully, was a little smaller and more feminine-looking. I'll help you pay for college on two conditions. What are they? Bree clasped her hands together and bit the inside of her lip to keep her enthusiasm from bubbling out before she heard the conditions. One, I want you to keep working at the coffee shop. I know it's not your dream job, but it will give you a resume which you'll need when you get out of college. Bree sighed, but she had expected he would want her to continue working. And while being a barista wasn't that fantastic, the hours weren't bad and would allow her to go to school. Plus, he hadn't stipulated a minimum number of hours she needed to work each week. Okay, what's the second condition? I'd like to meet this man who has so greatly affected my daughter. Bree's face broke into a grin. That one would be easy to comply with. I'll be happy to introduce you, but I have to warn you, he's SWAT, so his schedule is a little challenging. We will make it work. Their food arrived then, and the two enjoyed a wonderful meal and the nicest conversation Bree could remember having with her father in a long time.